everyone out there have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. This is Art to Heart, the Art Tour International show where we are featuring this incredible artist. You know, this is the Spectrum Miami segment, and I'm so excited because today we have with us our artist, master artist, Howard Harris. Howard, how are you doing? And welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> yes, it's always fun. Always fun to see you. I'm going to make this bigger so I can see you there. There, I see better. Everything that happens here, even the technical issues, happen live, guys. You're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> But I'm excited uh, to showcase your works today. Your work is very unique. Um, there is a bark in my background, and that's my doggy by the way, parenthesis, um, your work is very unique because, I mean, it has to be seen live to begin with. It, it, seeing life is just spectacular. You have an incredible process and we're going to talk about that, but it's mesmerizing. I can tell you what I love most uh, is your compositions and the patterns that you find in nature and in urban scenes everywhere there is this repetitions of forms and lines that is just it's like hypnotic so how do you call your art how do you call your style well my style i call it uh techno expressionism which oh. is essentially using technology to augment and help one's expressions through an art medium right and as you can tell by the colors and the lines and the forms i use a lot of technology from the original photograph that i take and essentially let the image almost tell its own story because yes. most of the time when we look at something we see through our eyes where most of the feelings and the emotions and the expressions are behind our eyes. And what I try to do is bring out what our eyes really don't see and put them on a canvas that screams out at you what's really there, or at least for me anyway, at, at some right. point in time. And you have brought, you brought photography to a much different level. This is not seen i had not seen before you and is it's 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 like three dimensionality bringing three dimensional uh with digital help right um yes. bringing three dimensionality to photography but at the same time the uniqueness is what you capture what you capture with that with the image it's like so much more profound than just the image or it's not relief no there's there's that essence of there's something that you capture you have that gift to show us what you capture in there in a totally different way well part of the what you're saying in terms of the uniqueness has been many people have told me that and in all honesty Uh, when I started doing all of these things, I felt that the world needed another photographer like they needed another left arm. So, <laughs> what can I do to differentiate myself, There. to set myself aside from, let's just say, all of the, I'll say, beautiful noise that's out there, but how can I out, how can I out beauty some of the best photographers in the world i can maybe equal them maybe if i'm lucky but i've what i tried to do is bring more of what i see as the image while i'm seeing the image both through my eyes and through my brain in fact yes it is unique uh, it's unique enough where the u.s government issued me a patent on my process And it's one of the very few patents of art processes that have ever been issued uh, by the government. So, yes, it is unique. I'm glad it's unique. 
and probably for 17 years it still will be unique <laughs> It's amazing. It's like you came to, I always say that uh, great artists are disruptors. And you came to disrupt the world of photography in digital art in a new level. <laughs> I'm going to share some of your work because people are listening to you and they're probably wondering uh, about your works. Um, this is this is what we're talking about. Um It's just, I don't know. I, I always, I'm fascinated by these lines. I'm fascinated by, by your patterns. That's, of course, a personal choice, right? That's a uh, personal choice, but this is what you see pretty much, right? This is what you see. That's what I see, and often that's what the image needs to be seen I'm as going, i'm going to go back here because i think it's playing it's playing along this is incredible this is incredible yeah that's a that's a actually an image that i found in an australian zoo uh, wow the photographs were leopards obviously right and the beauty of the animals as a photograph was nice, but it was just another leopard. So what I found to be a bit more expressive of, of that particular animal was the flow of the dots. It was almost like a, oh, it, it's more of a fluid type of flow of the pelts, particularly when the leopards moved. And that's what I tried to capture, some of the beauty of their movement while they are obviously in a static position. Mm. So, and then you, you get a number of colors and a number of lines. And I do that through technology of the camera. Shooting in raw form gives you, gives you a unique pixel by pixel you know, definition of the image. And what I do is choose very individual pixels to highlight that creates colors that, in all honesty, I really don't see when I'm photographing it. I hope some of them, I hope they are there, but often it does surprise me too, because my eyes aren't really that different from anyone else's eyes in terms mm -hmm. of what you're seeing. It's just, can you release what the image really wants to release. Right. And that's what the technology does, or helps me do anyway. Something that speaks to me on this picture, and I tell you that this is this is one of those that really capture me because I am, I am always looking for ways how we express uniqueness and at the same time, oneness, you know, as, as a whole. Because I believe we're not separated one from the other, right? We're one. And that's that's what I see on this image. Is this something that you were looking for? Uh, is there an underlying message here of us being part of a whole? Or Absolutely. Absolutely. Because often one goes through life, I would guess, just seeing what's what's obvious. And part of the beauty of, of the arts, particularly fine arts, is helping people understand what really isn't obvious and then making it obvious enough for them to see in a particular, let's just say a gallery situation. And then with my work through the use of uh, the different overlays that I use, there are types of overlays, the image actually is never the same uh, anytime you look at it from right. different angles, from different positions, different lightings and the like, whereas humans are never the same. I mean, we are the same in one, one moment of time, but then you take one step and you're in a whole different environment. And that's yeah. basically what I try to capture. However, the physical items that you going to see in Miami essentially are single images. And the reason they're single images 
is even though I'd like to create uh, the movement and the, let's just say the excitement that the overlays bring, some images don't need it. Mm -hmm. they, they work on their own, they work themselves. And yes, they are more static, but if I can't add anything to the image, then I look at it as, as what it's telling me or what it's telling me not to do. And the images that you'll see in Miami are, in all honesty, I chose them for Miami. <laughs> That's bright, awesome. Vibrant. Uh, and they're, they're kind of unique in terms of the image itself. And and that's something that it, it, I guess it's I was it challenging at any point to figure out which image do you want to um, do the overlays and watch. This is an image, for example, the one that we're looking at right now that I wouldn't need an overlay. I mean, this there's so much, you know, into that. There's so much depth into this into this image. How do you choose? Um, is this something that was challenging at the beginning or you always know which image to alter, how to print them, how to present them? How does that work in your mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, my daughters say that I need to smoke something before I start. <laughs> See, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Basically, well, you know, sometimes it might help. <laughs> in this case, this was a photograph of leaves on a tree in the fall wow and basically it was a windy day and the leaves were moving and the leaves were blowing and as any fall day particularly in the north you'll see different colors of uh, yeah. all over the place you'll see the undulating greens against the golds against the reds and the like and what i tried to do is just capture that that feeling of a fall day, you know, looking at a little patch of leaves. And then what I, then in this particular case, uh, I really have to do two things. I have to create an image that will stand by itself. This particular image is you're seeing in two dimensions. Mm. And then I, the, I also create the image. It's the same image, but I also create the, overlay for movement and more dimension and that's basically the same image modified a great deal and then placed over this and the way i determine whether i do that is basically just really looking at the images and seeing what the images want want to say wow and in this case the the movement is more in the colors, uh, in the in the reds and in the in the yellows and the bright greens than it is in the darks and the like. So that's how I create the the overlay. Wow! And I wish I was successful all the time. <laughs> but I some... guess Nick, that was my next question. Does it uh, does it uh, ever happens that you're like, no, what did I do here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, people people ask me who's my biggest collector. <laughs> I tell them it's the garbage man. <laughs> He's got a bigger collection of my works than anybody. <laughs> wow. So I, yes, I wished everything I did worked, but unfortunately, it doesn't. <laughs> this is so beautiful. There's so much peace in this in this work. I love the colors. The you're such a colorist. I love that oh. about your work. It's not just uh, the shapes, the lines, the forms, uh, the the depth, you know, is, is the colors that bring something special to your work. And it's like um, almost wanting to see through your eyes because you have to discover these colors yourself to be able to to reflect them, right? You have to fall in love with these colors to, to be able to want to share them. And this particular image was uh, fairly difficult for me to dig out, if you will. That have, that's Eris Rock, which is this gigantor rock in the middle of uh, Australia. And the Aborigines 
uh, it has a very sacred value to the rock. Essentially, geologists say that you're only seeing maybe a 16th of the size of the rock. And it's a gigantic mountain. And the rest is all underground. And the aboriginal tales is this rock came from the heavens that created an awful lot of life and what have you for the aboriginal tribes. And it's a very sacred place for them. And wow. what I tried to do is create the sort of the sereneness and the calmness that I felt when I was talking with some Aborigines about the rock. And if you're open enough, and I was lucky enough to get close enough to the rock where you feel the spirits of the ages talking to you. And uh, I felt that. And that's why it was so hard to create an image that, you know, I felt was worthy of the rock. <laughs> Yeah, and they have, there's this, you touch something really profound because there's I there's this vibration that comes from Mother Earth, right? And Absolutely. you can feel it if you're sensitive and you're open uh, and you allow it, you'll feel it. So all these incredible sacred places, they, they have that. These sacred places have that vibration. You can feel it if you're close by. Without a question, it is, it, you know, it just looking at it and talking about it now kind of, kind of brings me back and gives me sort of goosebumps or the chills or what have yeah. you. Uh, I, yeah, that's an image to like, to keep in, in your like meditation space and, and have it there. And I could just meditate on this and tell you, I could just have that as inspiration. Well, oh, this is beautiful. What I try to do is just capture those feelings. Mm. And, uh, if I'm not successful, the garbage man collects it. <laughs> <laughs> there, I think I got close. Although yes. The emotion that you see, that you have when you're there is just immense. So I think you did. I think you captured because once, as soon as I saw it, that feeling of peace. You know, there's that serenity that that comes from just just staring at it. So, you capture a lot of it. Yeah. Well, thank you. And do you is this an image that you have on uh, when you print it? Is this that you do overlays or how do you present it? That one would be presented with an overlay, uh, wow. and the overlay is predominantly through the grasses and the clouds because the rock itself is a sort of a static monolith if you will that, that we're looking at where the clouds and the skies are moving and the colors change and and the like so wow you know, that's it's, inspiring and eager to see that too <laughs> <laughs> Let's explore more. There's so much here. I'll just go nuts, you know, if, if you can see. I'm your fan. I'm your fan. Look at this. This is this. The colors, again, you know, they're just fascinating. You well, see? this was, a, this was a, another uh, sort of another spiritual experience. Uh, it was a photograph I took of uh, Mount Sinai in Israel. Wow. And this actually came out of the photo. I mean, one looks at it as if you look at the photo, it kind of looks like a boring mountain. But if you start digging deeper into, into what it is, then things start popping out of it. And it's honestly, this one amazed me. <laughs> but I just, I let it say what it wanted to say. And uh, this is what it said. And um, the white part, there's a white point there, right? Yes. Yeah. And a lot of that is just the, uh, in fact, uh, uh, that white probably, I haven't seen the original for a long time, but the white probably was a piece of overexposed trees or bushes or something. Uh, 
and then uh, it got deeper and darker and the lights around the side. Uh, this is just a piece of the mountain. It wasn't the whole mountain. Beautiful. But, there's there's like, there's so many colors. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like the rays of light are coming from the right, right? You can see that. I mean, I, that's what I translate to it. Yeah. It's like rays of light coming coming down. Absolutely. And particularly when you see these, uh, when you're there, particularly in the desert and the like, the light is so brutal <laughs> that it sometimes it defies cameras, technologies, or people even. Wow. Let's explore more. <laughs> Uh, guys, I hope you're having fun. We're having like an intimate conversation here with the artist and he is sharing. If you just tune in, you're watching Art to Heart and this is our master artist, Howard Harris. We're exploring his work. Look at this. This is mesmerizing. This is what I'm talking about. I'm fascinated about patterns in the universe. This is, this is it. <laughs> well, that's one of the, you'll see this pattern duplicated in almost every culture and petroglyphs and everything else. Yes. Uh, this is, I can't say a simple pattern, but its overall pattern is sort of the beginnings of what you will see really in lots of religious works and lots of works all over, uh, all over the world. And what I tried to do not terribly successfully, but I tried. You see a lot of what looks like, in, to me anyway, from here, uh, little pixels where they're all little circles with colors. Yes. And essentially, uh, this was this was a photo that I took in Australia, and I was just very enamored with the uh, Aboriginal artwork and how they see. And if you've seen Aboriginal artwork, it basically looks like gigantic Surat paintings. I mean, they're all dots and they're all colors and they're all particular shapes. And essentially what I've, I've come to understand, and it's basically from climbing some of the mountains, the few, the few they have in Australia, the Aboriginals kind of are looking as if they were from outer space or they're looking at the patterns way beyond uh, what even an airplane you'd see in an airplane. And it, it didn't really hit me until I came from, I, I, I came off of one of the mountains and I, I kind of had it in my head. And then we were flying uh, for hours across Australia and I was look. I'm a window looker, and I was looking down, and I said, "Oh my God! It is all it is all Aboriginal paintings down there." So what I was trying to do is kind of kind of see what they see in the land, and I, I'm I still struggle with it, but I try to see it. So that's where the that's where the movement comes from, and that's where the little circles come from. Uh, and that's the, you know, I guess as, as an artist or as an explorer with, of mediums, you know, I just, I'm, I don't like to be static myself. So mm. I keep trying to understand, let's just say different artists and different works. Like Chuck Close is another good example of somebody who's who's mastered a circle. <laughs> uh, I loved his work. Yeah, I mean he he does it he does it through portraiture and the like, which is just outrageously nice. Uh, but there's a freedom to the Aboriginal structures that I was trying to trying to get. And then this is an actual photograph of a landscape and. Uh, I, I kept looking at it and playing with the pixelizations through the raw filters and lo and behold, it, this pattern came out and I just, you know, dropped my jaw and said, 
whoa. <laughs> right. Maybe for one instant I got there. <laughs> it's like uh, honestly, I feel I feel like they um they go into um they they're able to travel space in their ceremonies. I don't know what they do, right? Um, they're not on the plane they're somewhere higher than the plane I think and they're able to access these patterns this this view from up above because you see it in so many different cultures and, and now that you you noted that it, it's real it's true I absolutely believe it is yeah I mean, there's I've yet to hear any better explanation. <laughs> Let's yeah. put it that way. And, you know, as, as a person who is fairly grounded in Western culture uh, and who grew up with Newtonian physics, uh, it's more, my work has more to do with the quantum point of view theories than it does Newton and the like, where mm -hmm. essentially, I've I've studied quantum theories and chaos theory and well here fluid dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> you just popped one in there. There you go. <laughs> uh, it, it's a matter of the the beauty in those in those theories basically is something that I think captures more of either who I am or who I aspire to be. Uh, I guess as an artist, you never are who you are. You are who you aspire to be, or at least try. Right, and right. What I try to do is understand some of the, let's just say, very simplistic complexities of nature. And uh, they are quite simple when you look at it. Uh, and you start backing off, and they become more and more complex. Uh, it, it's it's, true. it's pretty much of of how you how you view a molecule or something. Yes, uh, you can go in and out and see different things. And this one was actually this one became a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, oh, folks, yes. they're, they're nice yeah. patterns. We have to show those. Yes, and the reason I, I do some of the wearables is. It basically mimics, mimics yeah. life, the motion. I mean, it creates extreme motions. Uh, and the patterns change constantly. I love your wearables. I love your wearables. It's like wearing the energy of the image, your energy. You said something a few seconds ago. I want to backtrack on that. Because you said that the artist is not who who it is but who aspires to be right yes I and i so. i believe the opposite i believe that the artist is who you envision to be that's who you really are you're just now in your reality not seeing everything of the whole and perfect that you are so you're such a master artist i just i just tell you that i mean like i admire your work um But I know that artists don't see themselves that way, right? Artists always are looking to evolve. So you see yourself in a certain limitation when it comes to your view. I'm looking from outside. Uh, it's like looking at the mountain from far away and you see this majestic mountain. But if you're in it, you're probably not seeing how tall or how great it is. Well... I, 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 I'm flattered by what you're saying, and you're probably saying about the same thing, just using yes, yes. different formations yes. of words. But yes. I mean, as you know, as an artist, it's very, it's, it's easy to become static when yes. you, True. when you sort of catch on a particular click, if you will, or gee, everybody likes my twisted bottles, so I'm going to make twisted bottles until nobody wants them anymore. You know, that type of thing. I mean, true. that completely is boring. True, part, that is true. You know, part of what comes to me is before I started doing fine arts, 
I was a designer and I define design is basically artworks that you do for others. And that's what I did for many, many years. And now I'm doing art for myself. And I think that's the difference between design and fine art, where a lot of the yes. structure of the patterns that you see comes very directly from my design work uh, because it's a very sort of structured methodology that you use in design versus fine art. Yep. I want to acknowledge a few comments here because um, people are reading comments and we, we want to acknowledge them. So thank you guys for, for watching. So really having a good time watching this interview. So informative. That's Julie. Thanks, Julie. David, our dear David. He's an artist as well. This is very good artwork. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Such an inspiring story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're enjoying your work. I'm going to share the wearables. Oh, I have a scarf. I have a scarf. Um, let me, let's show here because these are so cool. These are cool. This is like wearing, I mean, for me, we're wearing the pattern is wearing the energy. I believe in that so strongly. And these colors are, they can change your mood, right? They're like mood, mood uh, healers. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one you can see the static image in my abstractions gallery. Uh, not the static image, but the image that's hung in right. galleries, if you will. And basically it began as a kingfisher bird that I shot in Africa. Wow. Uh, the little birdie was fishing and eating fish and you know, just having a great time doing it. And I tried to kind of capture sort of their gestures, if you will, uh, and their flashes of color when they fly. And again, putting it into a cloth situation, it really gives you the, the, the vast sort of way that emotions can be twisted and turned and tied and moved and it's windy it's not windy and you can probably explain it better than i viviana but the way you wear it you can tie it you can yeah drape it you can use it as a shawl type of thing and it's different every time you every time you do something i love it i love and it that's the way that's the way these works Let's yeah put it this way that's what i try to do with the works <laughs> it's uh it more than the fashion statement is awesome because every time you wear it and however you twist it or turn it is going like you say it's gonna come in a different you know you can accent this color or the other one which is already practical for us women <laughs> traveling yeah. i love that because if i put it this way is blue or this way is red etc i love that part uh but it i think it also it's like um how do i say it's that touch of color that alters your mood it, it like it works with you it becomes you like part of your aura i don't know how to call it really for me it's i just feel it that way it becomes part of yourself i believe that colors are extremely important and whatever you're wearing is what you're feeling so wearing something so vibrant is is just incredible look at this well also I love a, lot that. Of, <laughs> a lot of the colors are unpredictable too yes particularly <laughs> when you move which is yes. something that I, i really love about them yes i love i love the colors for me so my daughter's back also oh yeah <laughs> yes look at this yeah Actually, yes. that particular scarf, the base of that scarf is the paint buckets that you see behind that you're using as a background for the image. Oh, I see what you're saying. So the background for our, for our interview. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Okay, got it. 
So, I mean, I think we'll fight it a bit, but essentially yeah. that's really kind of where it's where it came from. And the original piece is called No Monkeys. And the oh, reason wow. why it's called that is essentially they were just very, let's just say they were colored barrels. And my wife said, yeah, but there's no monkeys in the barrels. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where the name came from. <laughs> The colors, the patterns. Yeah. These are beautiful. Yeah. That's wearing, that's like, you know, it's it's wearing an artwork, right? Yes, I guess. I don't wear them, but. <laughs> yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah, that's a, that's a blouse that's made from the, uh, it's made out of the scarf image. It's beautifully made. I love the way they use the pattern for the actual shape of the blouse. That was really beautifully made. Yeah. Well, and I, I have a group called Vita that makes these. And yeah, essentially, these yeah, essentially they have, uh, they use different uh, manufacturers. Uh, I'll say India right now because they, they move around a bit. Mm -hmm. But essentially what, what they do is a good deal of their revenue goes back into training uh, women groups in those particular countries uh, to help move them, let's just say, up the economic chain. So most of it, most of it is a, call it a not-for-profit type of situation. I do these to support them. That's beautiful. That's so, beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's why I doubly like them. <laughs> mm, beautiful. Now I I love them more now. I didn't know that uh, story behind uh, Vita, but oh, that's yeah. that's great to know. And uh, I've I've worked with them for a number of years and have checked them out every which way you can, and they they're very. Let's just say they're they're. They're extreme in terms of their dedication towards lifting up women's groups uh, that are in, some people call them sweat factories or whatever. Mm. But, uh, but the closest I've come to seeing one is sort of the Maasai collaboratives in Africa where, where there's a lot of support for those kinds of activities in women's, women's groups. Wow, that's awesome. Well, it makes me feel good to do it. It's good. Uh, it like makes you feel good to plant a tree. Yes, exactly. <laughs> a couple of hundred, couple hundred thousand trees. <laughs> yes, yes. So we got Carol from, uh, I'm going to pull it again. Carol from um, Alliston, Ontario. So <laughs> someone from Canada there. Hello, Canada. <laughs> All Thank right. you so much, Howard. This has been, I mean, this, this, I love this interview. I've interviewed you many times, right? But uh, I love the, the energy on this interview because I got to pick your brain even more and get to, to the essence of, uh, of, of your creations, which is, it's beautiful. Um, we do have your website and I'm going to ask our, producer if he's behind there thank you uh this is this is howard's website guys i invite you to visit his website and explore more of his work and again we're going to be bringing his works to miami spectrum miami in december oh my goodness i can't wait it's so exciting right and yeah his work are going to be live booth 503 Arthur International. I don't know if Howard is planning on joining or traveling to be there or not. That's still a, a secret, right? We still don't know. Well, what do we know? <laughs> the, truth, the, the medical gods are, the, are going to dictate whether I go or not. Okay. Okay. Right now, it's kind of a hot spot that I would rather yes. not be in. I and know. I probably won't make the call till the last moment. Yes. But, Yes. Uh, it, it's 
You know, there's a few states that scare me to death, and Florida is one of them. <laughs> I go with I, I, I go to I'm, Canada where they where where they know what to do. <laughs> I'm keeping my uh, faith that things are going to be incredible. I hope so. And well, we're going to be there representing you, and you're going to be there even if you're not, because we are going to have our screens there. We're gonna be able to get in touch with the artists on virtual connection, guys. This is going to be a hybrid hybrid experience for you is the first time but that idea came to mind because of what's happening some artists cannot travel so we're going to ask them to tune in a certain time so they can connect to the public it's going to be exciting regardless uh the works are going to be there so you know your works are there that means you're there already too and thank you so much for sharing your art it is inspiring but at the same time uh inspiring to a level i mean inspires my soul and my spirit Howard. it really does i really thank you for that and i don't know if there's any words that you want to share uh before we go with the audience out there who's watching well i, I just like to say that if you're not familiar with artur and viviana uh she always ends everything with keep inspired or stay inspired or what have you and occasionally when i'm feeling like the garbage man has too much of my artwork i pick up a magazine or i listen to viviana something or other and start it all over again so if you, if you're not familiar with those particular or with that particular group uh, they do some great philanthropic activities and I am proud to be one of the small supporters of that. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Howard. And you're a big supporter, big supporter of, of our work. Thanks for being part of our family, for inspiring us all, for inspiring everybody out there. Guys, explore those artworks. You're going to discover things that you have not imagined if you are Planning on doing some meditation sessions this afternoon, I strongly recommend you click on that website. It's in our comments and also on the description and you can visit Howard's website. Let him know what you think about his work, support the artists, support the arts, and don't forget, and you know what I'm gonna say, right? But I really mean it, don't forget to stay inspired. Oh.